It's odd and funny that Mission Impossible 5 was one of my most anticipated movies of the summer. Not because the last ones were bad, but because they were so damn good. The crew is all back. I was hearing early reviews that uh, Jeremy Renner and some of the other guys were kind of set to the side. I thought they were in it a lot. They were in it way more than I anticipated them being there. Yes, I don't think Renner, who seemed poised almost to take over the franchise in the past, there's no way in hell he's taking over for Tom Cruise. That's not going to happen. If anybody's going to take over the franchise, which nobody ever should, Tom Cruise owns the role as Ethan Hunt. He will always be Mission Impossible. But if anybody would take over, it's the female lead who is phenomenal and I'm sorry I cannot remember her name and my phone's out of battery so whatever I'm not a professional movie critic I'm just a guy that likes movies and loves to go I'm gonna screw up on names I'm not gonna know names but whatever that's what if, if you're on this channel you know that about me okay I'm real I'm raw I'm uncut uncensored or all that other shit. Anyway, it has all the fixins. It has all the ingredients that make up a good Mission Impossible meal. We have the break-in sequence. We have masks. We have twists. And yes, the twists. If you've seen any of the Mission Impossible movies, you know how this thing plays out. And you can see the twists coming from a mile away. It was very beat by beat, but it, it all works so well. I didn't give a shit if I could call something 10 minutes ahead of time, like, yep, that's him, or yep, that's gonna happen next. I don't need surprises anymore. I just need some good thrills, and it delivered it like it always does. Tom Cruise, I don't, and I've defended him in the past. Who cares if he likes Scientology and he's a little whacked out? Everybody in Hollywood's whacked out. Okay, at least Tom Cruise owns up to it, and he seems like an upstanding guy. He knows how to run better than anybody else in the business, which is to keep your fingers together. I mean, you gotta keep your fingers together to do the T-1000 run. Um, the female, was well, once again, I'm doing her a disservice by not knowing the actress's name. She, she was awesome. She's flipping around, guys. I love how Hollywood uh, female fighting now is to just use their body and just uh, run up guys, like run up their backs and twist their necks and then roll under another guy's legs, peekaboo up the other side, clip him in the back of the head, grab his gun, take out two more guys. It's all very gymnastic-y. That's a word now. It's all very limber. It's all very loose. I mean, I have a, I have a major crush on her. I should, uh, well, once I get done filming this, I will be doing some Google searches for, for her name and her whereabouts. Uh, I, I should edit that part out. The supporting cast outside of her is really good. Jer Jeremy Renner's funny. He's, he's really grown on me over the years. He's very charismatic. Uh, he's a little bit wooden, you could say, but I think he's loosened up a lot, especially in the Mission Impossible films. Simon Pegg is just, he's just the best guy to have on a road trip with you, and he's with Tom Cruise pretty much the whole film. He never gets old. He always has a great quip. He always has a good one-liner to throw out. <laughs> the villain uh, of the picture, which Mission Impossible's never had great villains outside of Philip Seymour Hoffman, R.I.P., which was phenomenal. Uh, but this guy was like, I don't know, he's like this British Steve Jobs villainy guy. He had this really mousy voice, which I thought was hilarious. And every time he was on, I was, I was getting a good chuckle and not totally at him. I thought it was just absurdly fun. So uh, he worked for me. And uh, I think he was he's one of the more memorable characters in the Mission Impossible. He's definitely better than the villain in the fourth movie, which I couldn't even tell you. He's just like an old white guy with a briefcase who can somehow hold his own against Tom Cruise. But none of that happens this time around. It's, it's much more plausible, I guess you could say, for a Mission Impossible movie. Solid actors. I already I already mentioned the action is great. It never ends. There's a little bit of slowdown during an opera segment, um, but it, you know it adds to the suspense and it didn't overstay its welcome. It was just a little. It could have been could have been chopped down. I think maybe about five minutes. There's a lot of just walking around the stairwells and not really doing a whole lot for a while. There's a there's a fucking fantastic speed chase. You see this on the trailer too. The high speed chase with the cars that goes on a lot longer than I think it would. And as soon as he's out of the car, he's on the bike and it just keeps going. So that happens in Monaco. They're all over the place. They're in Europe. Uh, they're in the United States for a little bit. Alec Baldwin can do no wrong. I think he's a great actor. He can play the comedian. He can play the serious role. In here, he plays both. He balances out very nice. Let's talk about a score for this. Um, and here's how you can rank it based on me. Here's how you can balance this. If Mission Impossible 3, which I think is the best, is a 9, Ghost Protocol is an 8, 
This one at an 8.5. I don't give action movies 10s very often, unless it's something that is truly memorable with lines that I'm going to quote until no end, like Die Hard. But this, this thing is great. You're going to have a fun time at the theater. You're going to laugh all the way through. Uh, is it realistic? No, but the stunts are, for the most part. Tom Cruise really hung off the side of a plane. He really held his breath underwater for a long period of time. If you've seen this review before you've seen the movie, go to the theaters, watch it, come back here, leave a comment below because I'd love to hear your thoughts. That's what Feud Nation's all about, is engaging with you guys, having conversations. Uh, I wouldn't do the channel if I didn't have anybody that was uh, listening and actively communicating with me. And I try to communicate back as often as I can. Until next time, I'll see you right here in the car.